We are live. Hello, Marty. Say hello. Hey, hi, how, hi, hey. <laughs> Today we're going to be talking about the five things that women say that ruin their message at work, <laughs> along with many other things. And we're going to try to answer any questions that people have. Uh, that's a new video that we have coming out this week. Uh, phrases that women have trouble with that men, men tend not to have trouble with. Uh, Marty, I know you're looking up some viewer questions for us. As you do that, what do you think one of the top phrases at work is that women will say that causes it? Hello, J.D. Chapman and Kevin Hawthorne. Good you evening. just woke me up. Lakeland, Florida. I've been, we've been to Lakeland, Florida. Yeah. Uh, so, Marty, what do you think one of the top five phrases are that women have trouble with? Now, you got to dig deep here because these Man. are phrases that seem. Especially since I'm not a woman. Well. <laughs> These now these could these could be seemingly very innocent phrases that women yeah, you're, trouble you're with. Sounding Give me some more fantastic right now. Okay, hold on. Tell me if I does this help at all? Yes, this that helps me? a lot. Now, so tell me where you think I should be, where it starts to get weird sounding. No, it's just whatever you have it at now sounds great. Okay, don't move it. Is that don't what you're saying? It. So. Okay. So, yeah, Mark, what do you think is one of the phrases? Uh, hi, Dan from Virginia. Hi, AZ. I'm sorry, but Morgan, that is a great, actually, that is almost always on the top 10 list. The reason that I didn't do that one is because it's been on my top 10 list so often. So good one, Morgan. And by the way, why is I'm sorry on the danger phrase list for women, Marty? Do you remember? You know. Why would oh, I'm now sorry? You're on mute. Should it be on every There you go. Huh? I can hear you now. Never mind. I'm okay. You're, You're okay good? now. You're okay. Okay. Why is I'm sorry? You mean as opposed to I apologize? Oh, that's a good one. Yes. If you have to apologize, I definitely recommend saying I apologize rather than I'm sorry. Because basically, you know, there's there's something very interesting that I like to keep in mind when I'm yeah. Yeah. With, a, with a new group of people that... uh Yeah. <laughs> You know, Marty, when human beings, we have survived as a species because okay. of our ability to Say collectively I'm learn and then pass oh. information on. You know, we have this collective consciousness and we when we when somebody starts speaking, we immediately start judging them and judging whether they are going to hurt us or not, whether they're uh, you know safe, whether they're a danger. And we learned to do that to do that as a species to keep ourselves alive and safe. And the number one thing okay. that now we start judging people on is the words coming out of their mouth. So as soon as I start to speak, I start to connect me with people. I start to connect myself with others who speak the same way as I speak. And we need to be cautious of the type of verbal patterns that we use, especially in new environments, so that we don't unintentionally connect ourselves with people who we might not want to be connected with. And we don't want to connect ourselves with people who go you. around saying, I'm sorry all the time because they tend to be disempowered people. Uh, yeah. So what... Hey, do you like Michael McGee? Thank you very much, Michael McGee. By the way, there is a difference. We're going to be doing these live sessions also for members only. Uh, and if you have not yet become a member of this channel or other channels, membership is different than becoming a subscriber. So you might want to check into that if you wanted to get in on some private member only chats that are coming up in the future. Just click on that members uh, button or the click on the join button. And it's like five bucks a month or something like that. And it's also the, the best way to help this channel and help keep this content coming. So, Marty, uh, did you come up with uh, did you did you grab some questions for us? I see that you look like you're itching to say something. You know, well, I mean, part of it was I was wondering if there was any questions that we have coming out of um, the audience right now before I start looking, you know, at questions. The number one question I have is. Who won the medallion hunt in St. Paul this year? I don't know. But Lee has a good a, a good point where she said, hi from South Florida. She's a woman. What are these phrases? I'm sorry. That <laughs> She said everyone says that it's fluff. Yep, that's not. I don't know if you're saying when people say it, it's fluff or when people say not to say it, that is fluff. But for either reason, that's why I did not say it today. But I will give you the five phrases now. Are you ready, Mart? Well, yes, but you're going you're gonna to address why not to say I'm sorry within those five phrases? No, I already addressed why not to say I'm sorry. The reason that I would not say I'm sorry is because, number one, if I have to apologize, I should say I was wrong and I apologize, and there's a couple of steps to that. But number two, yes. I don't want to connect myself with other people 
who use the phrase I'm sorry all the time because simply by using oh. remember that's what we were talking about how we have survived I missed that years. okay yeah I got gotcha. you yeah. yeah because because the brain is so we have evolved with develop we have developed the ability to immediately judge people, our subconscious mind, and make yeah. very accurate judgments as to their socioeconomic background, their level of education, their geographic origin, all of these different things we judge based on the words coming out of their mouth. And we're very accurate. Now, if we have to stop and say, like like mom does, because mom, you know, mom does not want to judge. She's a very- I know mom. Judge, right? Yeah. She doesn't want to judge. So yep. she tries to stop that and she'll say, wait a minute, no, I'm going to give people a chance. And so she will try to wipe that clean, as many of us do sometimes, and say, I'm going to put my judgment aside and I'll make a conscious decision as to whether or not they are safe, they're dangerous, they're going to contribute, they're whatever they are. And those conscious deductions, I should say, are, are far more inaccurate than our subconscious mind, which makes snap judgments almost entirely accurate every time. So... I don't want to use words that connect me with the wrong groups. It's the point of that. So did you get, did I answer that for you, Mart? That, that was better for me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank I you. get it now. Uh, and, you know, there was a couple, one thing that there is a question here inside. <clears throat> Michael McGee says, Dan, I just found your content, brother. Is your, your course still active? Oh, I have many courses that are active on Dan O'Connor's right. Um, uh, I'm not really danoconnertraining.com. I think that's what Michael needs to do. Yes, I'm going to put that in. Hold on one second. HTTPS. Uh, and then you know you lived in Mexico a long time when I read Cara's creative as Casa's creatives, but she's she's given us some smiles. Lorene, she's uh she's in Australia saying hi to you. Hi. Who? I think I it's Lorene. Marty, you know, we need to do that. We were talking about going to Australia. I need to do that. Talk's cheap, man. Let's go. Okay. I just posted, uh, boy, I hope it's store and not shop. I, I'm not really 100% sure on that. But if you go to my website, M Mr. McGee, you will find on the store, there are several courses and a inner circle membership, which gives you access to all courses. A lot of my courses are now in the vault for different reasons. And so you can get some of my main courses are still available to buy separately. Or if you get the inner circle membership, you get all of my courses, even the ones that are in the vault and are not available for the general public anymore. Okay, Mark. All right, cool. All right, as we're moving down here, I think you said, well, Lee is saying anyway, hi from South Florida, I'm a woman. What are these phrases? I'm sorry, everyone says that it's fluff. No problem is another inappropriate filler phrase. Do you agree? No problem, Dan? No problem is always on my top 10 list, actually. Uh, is it? Lee, is that Lee, did you just say, Marty? Lee. Mm -hmm. Lee. Because especially when you say to somebody, no problem, not only does it does it make me look like I I use a spittoon, it also wow. it, it, oh, you know what I mean? right. it's just it if I if there is no problem, we generally use no problem in response to somebody thanking us. And so not only does it dishonor myself and them by not properly saying, you're welcome, when I should be saying that, it is also, it's again, connecting me with the wrong group of people who is not, I'm not taking the time to be in that moment and honor you and be like, you're welcome. That's so much more effective and better and appropriate and so many different things. Yeah, no problem or not a problem. It's like, not a problem. It's, it's huge, huge. Wow. It, it is showing to the person to whom I say that I invest zero in my communication or customer service skills. So get ready because this is probably going to be a turbulent ride with me today because I don't wow. invest in my skills to make it any easier for you. And you there can you tell go. that. Okay. I just All said, right. No All problem. right. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, okay. Oh, see, now this is when your mom's name is Jean. You get this wrong. Would it be Janice? G-E-A-N-I-C-E? -E? Janice? Her, what is, how do you spell it? G-E-A-N-I-C-E, -E, Watts. Oh, yeah. That's Sorry if I got way. your name so wrong. I, I would guess Genus. Genus. I like that because our mom's name is Jean. So I that was out. That's actually what I was going with. Okay. Apology means you won't do it again. Sorry. Sarah, wait a minute. Sarah's taunting me. With, Where's Sarah? Sarah. She's... She's, she's greeting you from Arizona. Taco Bell lunch. What? Well, she's taunting me with her Taco Bell lunch. She had Taco Bell for lunch today. And now I'm now I'm totally sal salivating thinking of it. <laughs> Dear Lord, you're getting way ahead. Just 
we, you know, we're, we're here really happening. Uh, you know, Morgan says, I'm sorry, but have we, have we gotten everybody here? JD's saying hello. I just want to make sure we say hello. You did say hi to Kevin and Morgan and Kathy down in, over in Canada, uh, AZ's in Virginia. And so I just want to make sure. Okay. Now we're caught up. Okay. Sarah's in Arizona eating Taco Bell, by the way. Oh, all right. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, we, no, there's a couple more questions though. Wait a minute. The first question we got was, what were the five phrases? Oh, okay. Right? <laughs> okay. Uh, let me answer that one. Uh, okay. And by the way, th this these are just my top five for this week. So there are many, and there are many different reasons. But let me get my slide out so I don't mess them up. Okay. Number one, I feel. And we I say that because you will hear people a lot at work you tend to hear women say this more than men, you know, say something like, well, I just feel that that is yada, yada. I just don't feel that's the right, the right road for us to go down. I just don't feel like that's going to be good for us. I just don't feel, and, and I have to keep in mind, although, although I am a huge proponent of love in the workplace. And I believe that, especially in the new age that we're moving into right now, it's more about feelings and love specifically than anything else. But when I'm talking about a an opinion as to what project or how this project is going, what proposal we're going to take, what solution we're going to choose to solve a problem, in those situations, people tend to say, "Well, I feel," and then give a bunch of BS that doesn't that that is not pertinent and doesn't do anybody any good. And so, if I instead of saying, for example, "I feel that this is the best route to take," what I should simply say is the data shows that this is the most for, and then be specific about it. The data shows that this would be the most economical solution. Well, I can understand that these are your opinions and this is the, these are your proposals. According to the data that I have, that would be the most customer focused solution. And when I stop talking about what I think and what I feel and simply say, or simply use data driven responses give what the data driven response data driven response shows and uh eliminate words like better best you know i i think that would be a better solution why is it more you know customer centric then that's what i should say so that is why i feel is at the top of that list how's that mart i feel like that you're really hitting the you're hitting it, man. I'm only giving I one. I felt that. I I'll felt that. The second one in a minute because I know that Marty wants to, and I want to answer some questions. Can I Can I say I felt that? Hey, ooh, I felt that. How does that? You probably that okay? could, but I would refer you back to rule number two. And oh, okay. Thank you. Yes. Rule number, <laughs> rule number one is say, s s s <laughs> rule number one in the new rules that is coming out on February 9th is uh, speak less. Just zip it. And so I would, instead of saying I'm feeling that, I would I would ask myself, why am I contributing? You know, what what is the purpose of me saying that to begin with? And is that the best way to 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 phrase that? And maybe it is, Mart. I'm not saying it's not. I'm just saying I'm a big proponent, especially these days more than ever, of not saying anything. And when you say because once you get to a point where you invest enough in your communication skills. You stop giving it away for free and people start valuing it when you value it yourself. And so speak less. And then when you have to speak or when you feel as though you should speak, which is, by the way, not a feeling, <laughs> like I just said, it should be a process that you go through to determine whether or not it's time for you to contribute. And when it is, choose your words wisely. So I would refer you to rules number one and two, Mart. <laughs> Amazing. Second Amazing. phrase. Okay. Go ahead. What is, is, it, is there a question I can't really see very well today? It's well, kind of didn't you here. say, weren't you going to go over the second principle, the second? I would rather answer a question before I did, but I'd be happy. Oh, that's to where we're at now. Okay, yes, then I do have one for you. Okay. Morgan's saying, what do people mean when they say, you seem innocent in a work context? It sounds like they mean that you're a sucker. You seem innocent? Yeah, that's just weird in general. I don't even think, like, you seem innocent. Like, you know, you Morgan... Not... Morgan, Morgan. Sorry. <laughs> I recommend, depending on who that person is, if it is a person that is a five or above in terms of what they contribute to their personal, professional, or spiritual development, I might let that slide. If this was like a competitor or if it were uh, just somebody who might be wanting to take the spotlight off of you, 
I would call them out on that and tell them, I believe that's inappropriate to make uh, character to to <laughs> to characterize my my uh, what would it be if you're characterizing any type of uh, I believe those types of characterizations are inappropriate. Are creepy. In the environment. They're just creepy. It's Can creepy. You say creepy? But, right? but you want to make sure that you call it out. Like you want to call out those yeah. types of characterizations, those types of. Uh, <clears throat> Yeah, that, that's exactly what I would call it. So I would name it a characterization and call it out and say, ah, I'm not comfortable with those types of intimate characterizations. Yeah. You know, because then they'd be like, why, why do you mean yeah. intimate? Yes, so, that's a good word. I right? would, I, right. if I heard I, somebody say that to me, I'd be really, really thinking about what I said next. Right? You would not say that next because. I'm an adult. That's I'm, why. Well, an adult. And I want to keep, I want to keep a really high level of professionalism at work because it is a an excuse then and something that I can fall back on when people are getting way too personal and hey we do not share the type of intimacy you and I we don't have the type of intimate relationship so I would I would I would appreciate it if you would keep your comments and your and your communication with me professional as I do with you simple you know but when you accuse people of being too intimate with you that tends to grab attention and you have to just make sure that you don't get too intimate with other people because that's just a big party. <laughs> Good lesson. Okay. Uh, Michael, <laughs> Michael wanted to say, Michael Less McGee. <laughs> yeah. Michael McGee wanted to say that actions speak louder than words. I'm really trying hard today. One of my goals is to make sure we're getting all of the comments, uh, the appropriate ones anyway. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what is, what is, what is, Mr. McGee mean when he says actions speak louder than words. I think he was referring earlier. He says true apology is an action when we were talking about I'm sorry versus a, an apology. You Just know what? Kind of I, I have to say the two and adding on to that, uh, Marty, we've talked about the love languages. Oh, yes. I used you as an example of my love language uh, revelations when, you know, if you have not yet familiarized yourself with the five love languages, that really made a big difference in my life. And it's a very simple concept, but it is not so simple to actually implement. Meaning, you know, what am I, what am I going to do differently? And even knowing the concept, a lot of us know the concept, but we still do not know the people in our lives, what their language is. And so we're not specifically using it with them or tailoring what we say to honor the people, you know, to whom we're delivering these messages. And if you need to apologize, it's a fantastic way to tailor your apology to that specific person and their language. For example, if I wanted to apologize to Marty, like you, I might tell me if I'm right, Marty, if I felt okay. really bad, if I did something that you were, you were upset about. Yes. And I were going to apologize to you. I'm guessing that of the five languages, your language would be more quality time. And I would, if I really wanted to show you my contrition or demonstrate that, I would say, Mark, you want to go out to lunch today and spend some time with you talking about things other than work or, you know, just spending time with you. Would you feel that, Marty, if I were to apologize to you in that manner? I, I wouldn't yeah, say that I'm would... apologizing that way. I would just do that. <laughs> You've never done that. So I, know. I totally know that this is that's not my language. I know this is hypothetical. No, no, of course. Sure. No, it'd be great. It'd no, be I mean, great. Would you, or like for me, I would much rather you send me 50 bucks. You know, well, or, yeah, there's, there's, there's the pre COVID, post COVID Martin. And post COVID Martin, uh, for most folks, the $50 would be a great, great start. Really? And then, and then we can talk about coffee later. Uh, you know, and probably that's all it is talk let's okay. so all right should we should we should we keep going down here now yeah. as well down yeah, the, by the way there's lots yeah. of words or you know chores things all the, a whole bunch of stuff but yeah, yeah when you Kathy can, when says you can, hi when you can when you can craft five different ways of saying you're sorry depending on somebody's language you can really get away with a lot of stuff <laughs> that's that is good that's good to teach. Okay, what question? So Kathy says, hi, A, from Canada. Well, see, now Kathy doesn't know that, maybe she does, that you and I are originally from North Dakota, so we're like cousins. And in fact, it was people that came from Winnipeg, Canada, that moved to Saint, what is now St. Paul, Minnesota, and but in terms of uh, uh, settlers, European folk, and uh, were some of the first European folk to settle. This little walk down you know, memory lane is fascinating. 
Yeah, Barbara says hello from Florida. Hi. Um, Lisk is not cool with someone who says, I really have an aversion to it is what it is. It's very oh, difficult. my goodness. I agree. I that 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 is on my list of t- top danger phrases as well. I'm guess. Uh, tell me why. The reason that I put it on my list is because it's uh, like we were talking about before. It's a nothing phrase. It's just basically saying, "I'm going to say it, or I'm going to do it. I'm going to say it. It. Uh, I've, there's no resolution. I've resigned, <clears throat> and it doesn't mean anything. It just kind of rubs right. salt in it, the wound. You know. You know. It's like a lazy person. It reminds me of. Is it Bruce Hornsby? I attribute every song I can't think of in the '80s to Bruce Hornsby. I don't know. It could be in the, the range, Eagles or huh? Bruce Hornsby in the range. I don't know. The guy who's saying that's just the way it is. Yeah. Bruce is Hornsby that Bruce Hornsby? Range. Okay. In this one instance, I'm correct. Remember, he's just basically saying you're super lazy because you're just saying, "Well, that's just the way." Yes. It is. And by the way, I like to tell people, especially if it's an yeah. environment, and I believe. My role is to teach. If it's not, I tend not to say anything because, you know, I'm, I'm not, I don't want to go around teaching lessons and, and being looking foolish and not completing my mission, which is to learn lessons. But when somebody says, well, it is what it is, if I'm in a management role, it's good to remind them, well, it is what it is because you're allowing it to be that way or because you made it that way. Things aren't just, things don't just right. manifest into being. Things right. are what they are for a yeah, right. reason. There's cause and effect. So is that a cause or is that effect? Most people are seeing cause when it's actually effect and they're seeing effect when it's actually cause. And instead of going around saying it is what it is without knowing what it is, they should pay attention to what it is and figure out, is that cause or is it effect? What is the is? (laughs) That is correct. All right. Now, what do we say here? Oh, oh, well, Sarah. Oh, you know that she had her Taco Bell for you. For your hey, favorite. Sarah, Taco Bell Gringo food. All right, now Kathy, Kathy from Canada wants to know how she can react to a customer who says, Hold "On Siri's talking to me." All of a sudden, I don't know why. Okay, Mart, did you have a question, Mart? Well, Kathy does. She what wants to know how she can react to a customer who says, "I will not take no for an answer." And I'm wondering if that's not a broken record. Couldn't you just possibly say, I'm <laughs> Yes. Unfortunately, I mean, that's just my I'm not the expert, but I've I know one. And I remember him saying that. Yes. I I depending on the situation, I might use different additional phrases with that. But when if it's if your job is to I mean Marty, am I correct that I, I'm listening because I can't really see anything right now? That is a She's in a customer service position speaking to a customer. Well, it's it's two senses. How can I react to a customer okay. who says, I will not take no for okay. an answer? Oh, you might want to put these. If you put these questions up, I could read them too. You could just click on them and they go How out. How do I do it? You just click you on got them. The, you no? got the power. You I don't got have the that. power. I don't okay. have that power. No, you don't have the power. Okay. Um, I would maybe add, for example, and the reason that I might add this for you, Kathy, is because it might make your saying this a little easier. I might add, well, that may be, but, you know, for example, I'm not taking no for an answer. Well, now if, now if it gets to this point, by the way, I'm assuming that this is a client relationship that is different from, let's say a cashier at the grocery store, because if I'm the cashier at the grocery store, I just can't see getting this deep into it. But if I have a client who's saying, well, I just can't take no for an answer. Well, that may be, but that's the only answer I have for you. You know, well, I just, I won't take no for now. I'm just, that's not acceptable. Well, that may be, but unfortunately it's all I can tell you, you know, and that, that may be, but that's Where what I have. This? Yeah. And the reason I would keep saying that is because you don't want to stress over it too much. You know, we have enough going on in life that, that, to take time and try to think of new responses for a difficult person. Now, if this were, uh, you know, if I'm working at a funeral home, and they're saying, I just can't take that, you know, the, I can't take that for an answer. And it's a little more sensitive. I might, you know, be a little bit more, <laughs> a little bit more uh, sensitive to their, to their needs. But it sounds like what you're saying is, yes, you want to use the broken record and a, maybe that maybe but, and you're good to go. And you just keep saying it. Okay. Lisk, Lisk is saying, um, my ex used to say, I didn't realize it could be a problem. Probably part of the reason that's an X. <laughs> what did he not realize was the problem? I don't know. I mean, I just think that might have been the go-to word. Oh, I didn't realize that was a problem. I don't keeping the seat up. I didn't realize that was a problem. 
<laughs> I'm just going and I'm grasping at straws. I didn't know that was a problem, not taking the trash out, um, <laughs> doing the dishes, the laundry, your share of the work. You know what, Marty? What I for it sounds like if those are the types of situations that you know, if you're if you're receiving that psychic message, it sounds like that's a perfect opportunity to give somebody the hamburger, which is the when you I feel because. And I love the when you I feel because not only because it works on my mother, which is a very difficult, you know, person. Let's give people an opportunity to absorb the hamburger. Okay, gotcha. The hamburger. The hamburger is when you I feel because. Marty, when you don't take the trash out, even though you say you're going to, I feel confused because I love you and I try to do what I tell you I'm going to do. And when you say, when you I feel because, and you use the I love you in there, like when you use those types of words with me, I feel I, I feel like I want to cry because I love you and I don't say those types of things to you. You know, or if, when you don't do what you say you're going to do, I feel so disappointed because... I love you. And I see that as a sign of love. And when you don't do it, I don't feel loved. You know, people are going to be like, ah, oh, I'm sorry. You know, I think someone, you know what I think guys, okay, I'm just going to be a general guy for a minute. You know what I think they really respond to even better? I jumped the fuck up and right out of class. I remember in college one time because this buddy of mine, he said basically the same thing. Hey, Marty, when you forget to bring the forks for the cake we're about to eat, I feel like you're not listening, and it upsets me because, and here's the phrase, I counted on you. Yes. God damn, I hate that phrase. That's one of my favorite closing lines. Oh. Can I count on you for that? You know, Because or, I counted on you. I, I counted on you. We were we were all counting on you. I you ran right down. to the floor. You let us down. It wasn't far. Anyway. You know, okay. Uh, no I'm problem. Not, I'm not mad. I'm disappointed. I was counting right. on you. That's right. Now, do you think, do you think no problem infers it possibly was a problem? Yes. I think so. Absolutely. It does. Sure. Well, yeah. Or else who, who brought up a problem? I was just saying, thank you for your service. And all of a sudden I'm being told that I'm not really a problem. No problem. Why? JD, who's JD. obviously one of the smarter people in this crowd says, uh, Marty keeps everyone on track. Marty's a good on track kind of guy. He's colored. Thanks for your insight. Line. Brain damage back. Greetings from California, it. Orange County, Santa Ana, Ole, Ohana, Huapo. There you go. You're the, <laughs> you're the handsome O'Connor. Uh, Lisk is now saying, I had a writing professor who made us cross out, I think. He would say, yes, we know you think that because you're the author. I agree with that. I agree professor. with that as well. Also, uh, I have an idea. Remember that as well. That is not on our top five list today. But at work, again, going back to the We Connect people with other people who speak as they speak. I don't want to be going around telling people, I have an idea. You know, everybody, people, people have a lot of crummy ideas that they bring into work and that doesn't, you know, doesn't right. serve anybody. But if people are looking for solutions or answers to their problems, that's what you want to be known for bringing. You know, that's, that's what you want to have coming out of your mouth. I believe I might have a solution for you. I have a couple of proposals for you. I think I have the answer, not I have an idea, or I think I have an idea, or I feel as though I have an idea, things like that. Uh, well, Lee says, hi, good, thanks, hi, Lee. Dan. Lee says, I am responsible for, I think Lee's re responding to the customer service question, I think a little earlier, went through a lot of, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, wait, no, uh, well, anyway, but Lee's, what, sh what Lee is saying, I'm responsible for many projects. I appreciate that you have direct responses. I'm tired of being asked how I feel about something. It's irrelevant. I'm in my job to satisfy my clients. I think you'd agree with that, wouldn't you, Red? Absolutely. Yeah. In fact, I sometimes suggest that people say that at work when people when they're asked, how do you feel about that? Well, how I feel is irrelevant. What the data is showing is blah, blah, blah. And it just makes, it does so many different things. You know, it says, hey, I'm not playing here. You know, I'm not here to have a kumbaya. We're not braiding each other's hair. I'm here to get some, you know, to tell you what the data is showing and work with that and provide solutions to your problems and go home. <laughs> There it yeah. is. There it is. Uh, and then Lee follows up. Can't hurt my feelings. It's irrelevant. You know, that's a good point, Lee. And I, I, that's one of the goals for so many of us. When we, when people come to me, it's people, a lot of people come to me when they are like uh, running out of options and they really feel like they're at the end of their, 
career, their op their options, their rope. They can't take it anymore. And it's that revelation. It's you know, I can, I can always tell when there's a turning point when people realize, wait a minute, I've been making this personal, and I've been taking this. This is not personal. I can come into work, and none of this. I don't have to bring any of this home with me. You know, this is all in my own head. This relationship that I have formed with these people and have let it become so toxic. And that's a that's a big revelation to know, like Lee said, that you know, he just goes home. That's it. This is not personal. To know nothing is personal at work is a big deal. And I'd say if you can learn that before 50, you're doing just fine. <laughs> yes. I'm telling you, man. I you know, it took me, yeah, right, long time. Oh, really? Uh, you struggled with that? Well, I mean, you know, to you're a certain more sense, you're kind of you're kind of sensitive. You're a crybaby. Uh, sure. You know, but uh, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Let's just keep going. You know, Marty right, so, are Irish twins, by the way. Yep. Kara asks, or Kara, I don't know. I I don't know which. It's not Casa though. So we got that. What do you do when a coworker continues to do your work after politely asking her to stop? Well, that's a hard one because man, that's that's a. Well, I would have to. I, I would. Ha Let's say that Marty, you're doing my work for me. I would have to sit down with Marty and say, "Mart." Now, I would script this out because this is one of those situations where, if you are a more passive person by nature, <laughs> you're going to uh, say too much. If you're more aggressive, you're going to say too little. I would script it out like a DESC, -E Marty. I understand that you are trying to do me a favor when you do my work for me. However, what you don't seem to realize is I'm getting paid to do that and judged on it. And if you don't do something correctly, I'm going to have to pay for that. I'm going to be judged for that. And I don't learn as I should when you do my work. So please, I'm asking you very clearly, don't do my work anymore because that's not going to be good for you or me. I'm gonna get you. Right? Okay, brain damage. Huh? That was great. Oh, by the way, I would, I forgot to add my benefit statement. So at the end, I would say something like, and that way, when, when you, in that way, when you are reviewed, you're only reviewed on your work and I'm only reviewed on mine. Yes. Which would be benefit to some people. There you have it. Uh, um, so, you know, first of all, Morgan, thank you. But Brain Damon you, wants, wants to know, why do I keep getting the comment, you're too nice, when I'm actually trying to be more disagreeable if I feel it and I don't say I'm sorry when it's supposed to be, excuse me. There's a lot going on there. Okay. You're too nice. That's a, uh, you want to listen to that. Uh, because if you've heard that more than once and it's, it's being brought up where now you're saying people are telling me I'm nice all the time. That's not a compliment. People aren't telling you, oh, you're such a great guy. They're saying to you, you're you're compromising too much. You're giving in too much. You're too flexible. That's in their eyes. Maybe you don't see it that way, but what they're trying to say is, I don't see you bringing what you're here to bring because you're being too nice with other people. Maybe you do other people's work. Maybe you allow other people to take the spotlight when you should be the one in it, when you should be, maybe they, you allow them to take the floor when you should have it. So listen to what they're saying to you. Uh, and do something about it. Because if you've heard it more than once, it's affecting your general career and reputation. And figure, what if you, know, you know what you could do? Figure out, sit with somebody, whoever said that to you, ask them specifically, you know, I'm trying to do some work on my communication skills and my professional abilities. When you say that I'm too nice, can you give me some examples? Don't say, what do you mean by that? Say, can you give me some examples of what prompted you to say that in the past? And they'll tell you, and then, you, then you'll know. But you have to get to the bottom of that if you're being told. That's a big deal. What if it's only coming from, like, say, one person? I don't know what's happening here with brain damage. But sometimes, because I've had that happen to me, where I've thought, you just don't know what you're talking about. So why don't you just beat it? Well, it depends because, on the person, uh, I guess. You know, yeah. But no matter who it is, if, if somebody's, if somebody's I am a big believer in, even if it's people who under normal circumstances you would not listen to because their opinion is ridiculous and you know they, okay. they are not serious players in your organization. Usually when a message is resonating with you like you're enough for you to bring it up here on this program, uh, 
it's because you're supposed to pay attention to it. And so I would always try to go back to that person and just ask, what do you mean by that? And if they give you a ridiculous answer, then you know, okay, that was ridiculous. But if they give you something that actually has some substance to it and they said, well, you know, they could say something such as, well, I, I just noticed that when you bring your ideas to the table, three times out of four, you don't get them implemented and you, you give in to other people. That would be something you'd want to pay attention to. Gotcha. All right, let's keep going here now. Uh, Marty is a fiery, fiery individual. Yes. Oh, Marty, we have to hurry up though because we're about to cross our limit. I think I don't know how long we've been on, but it, it's about thirty minutes. And I need to. We uh, are at thirty-five minutes. We're having some work done out there. Oh, hey guys. I have a. Uh, <laughs> um, by the way, your dog talking? is very sad. Without you, I'm Marty. sorry. Your dog is very sad. Okay. All right. So here we go. All right. Let's see. By the way, Maggie and Buddy are here. I bet people wanted to say hi to but Buddy. Oh. Buddy, by the way, if you are a big follower of Buddy, Buddy the dog, he is he's kind of getting up there in years, so he's napping a lot and he's totally deaf. And uh, since he is napping, I don't. I, it'd be difficult for me to get him here. But the next time, I will have both Buddy and Maggie here. Hello, there's Maggie. I don't know if you can see her. She has breast cancer and she's sleeping a lot. Um, um hold on one second. People want to see her. Hold on. There she is. Can you see? Her? Hey, there's Megs. Hi, Megs. Hi, baby. Yeah. Oh, stretch it out. Stretch it out. There you go, honey. Oh, there you go. Oh, but you got bedhead. Okay, so that's Megs. I love you, baby. Okay. Okay, that's great. Catherine, and we love her too. Catherine, uh, she looks really cozy, actually. It almost looks like she's in front of a fire with the oh, lighting. She's curling up to the red light as if it's a fire. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's that's great. All right. Catherine wants to know. Now you're gonna have to start. We're gonna we're gonna do something like a uh, pyramid, five thousand dollar pyramid or something. Off the top of your head, here we Family go. Feud? But something like this. So, yeah, top five answers are on the board. This okay. is what we're doing. Family Feud. Catherine says, agree about the five things not to say, but top five things on the board. What are the best five things to say in trying to get your opinion listened to in a meeting of four to twelve people? That's pretty specific. I like the, it. The best so things go. to say. What are the five best things to say in trying to get your opinion listened to in a meeting of five, four to five, four to twelve people? Okay. Like you said, data shows that says something. You know, maybe something like that. Okay, so, go ahead. Well, it's, it's going to be different for everybody. I believe one of my favorite phrases yes. is the uh, "If I can show you this, would you be willing to that?" For example, if you're in a group of people and you you see that everybody's going, "Oh God, if we're if we're going to do that, that's going to." That's gonna that's gonna take so much time. We're gonna have to put in so much overtime. If I can show you how we can implement this plan without one minute of overtime, would you then be willing to hear me out and listen to what I'm saying? That's so, one. I like because, it. That's because cool you would have to be so unreasonable to say no. Right. Number two. I like that one. That's okay. a good one. Uh, number two. Um, I'm trying to think of. It's difficult if you don't know this the the context. Uh, but hold on one second. Let me get let me get some general ones that'll just that are good good gong ones. Um, okay, <laughs> well, <laughs> hold on. What? You, well, I'll give you some very general ones. And when I, if if you're competing with a group full of people, for example, for the floor, I'm a big believer in when you speak, use the same strategies like public speaking speakers, you know, if you're giving, if you're delivering as a, a presentation to a group of people with the intention of selling them, the tactics, the phrases, the tone, the melody, the speed, all of those things that you would use in a public keynote speech, for example, that should not be very different from how you would speak one-on-one -on -one or in a group of five people. And you'll notice those effective communicators, they speak all of the time as if they are standing at a podium. You know, there's not a, and that's, I, as because I have so much experience in speaking, there's not a whole lot of difference at, at, at my stage in life but from when I stand on a podium or when I'm speaking to you one-on-one, -on -one, it's very similar. Therefore, I would try using strategies such as if when it's your turn to talk, you know, when you're breaking in, use a statistic, you know, use a, use a, 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 a what do you call it? A memorable statistic. For example, like let's say that you were, trying to, uh, Marty, what's something that you might be trying to sell people in a group or convince them 
of like what's this what's the situation she might be in i just wanted i don't want it to look like i was planning i'm not sure but maybe why 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 uh we might want to use uh start moving to uh robot vacuums as opposed to handheld battery vacuums. you know the handheld ones why would you want to do that 34 percent of americans yeah at this moment no kidding 30 floors yeah and those 34 percent of americans would not have dirty floors if they had a robot back. Why don't they have a robot back? Wow. They don't think they can afford it. Like if you were to just say that, like people would already, like they'd start listening. You know, you just make it up with, if I can show you how to make it affordable, if I can show you household in the right. United States to have a robot. Or or it could be a fact like this. It could be it could be a statistic like this. Over 12,000 children have died worldwide because they ingested <laughs> for E. coli infections. E. coli infections. We don't have to actually come up with the actual. St- I don't know that we need to actually. <laughs> well, you'd want to come up with the actual number, but you know, like, know, we, you're, just, you're just like selling vacuums. We don't. But well, but for example, <laughs> that's that's Let's, just. A, uh... to, illustrate the point you want to come up with yeah. the real number but there is an act you could it would it would only take 20 seconds to look on google and find out how many people die of e coli poisoning under 12 years old and then you could say there there, of all the children that were died that died last year of e coli poisoning how many of them would have been saved with a simple robot vacuum that vacuums while you sleep you know this is this product not only it cleans floors. It saves lives. And we have to remember that and what we're here to do. So that's one statistic. Another thing you want to do to capture attention, for example, that would be used by, you know, speakers and individual speakers alike is uh, storytelling. And storytelling is a, if you're not a good storyteller, the way you might want to start weaving it into your everyday communication. And by the way, when I first started hearing about storytelling, I thought it was for the birds. But now I get it that we are as a culture craving stories. And uh, and when you weave it into whatever it is that you're saying, it's very effective. And the way you want to do that, by the way, is let's say that, you know, you're competing, you're, you, it's your turn to speak. I remember lying on the bathroom floor the, <laughs> the first time I ever tried tequila and remembering I thought I was going to die. And what made it even worse, what added insult to injury, that grime that was there on the floor <laughs> you, know I mean? you excuse me it was horrible i don't want to tell too much about the story yeah, yeah. absolutely disgusting it's absolutely disgusting but you the way you want to weave storytelling in when you are speaking in that type of form or in a group setting or when you're giving a keynote is the, the, and the only point i was trying to make and then couldn't figure out how to stop it was you don't want to say all right all right let me tell you a story or you don't want to say okay everybody okay um, I'm going to start, I have to, I have to tell you something that happened, but no, you just like, for example, there I was on the floor lying, you know, hoping that I didn't get even more pathogens because of the filth that I was you know, up against that, that I would ever, you just want to start with the story. You know, I was looking out the window and rubbing the glass to get the frost off of it so that I could see the snow falling outside, you know, you just get into the story. So you, you want to start as if, as if they have missed the first page and, or they just jumped into the story and it makes people go like, what, 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 what's going on? What's going on? And they, they pay attention because they think, I think I just missed something at the beginning and you're, you know, hooking them in that way. So that's, that's a great way to grab people's attention. Um, It sure is. You know, speaking of that, Morgan has a question. Wait, wait, she said the top five things. I think we said three now. Three, but hey, one, one more. Just, one more. There, one more. There's like twenty. I'm just okay. Go ahead. You know, I, I, I just feel like I, I really do. I we hit it out of the park for you there. That that's my opinion. Morgan has a question too. How do I react to managers who insist on wanting respect, but they conduct themselves with immaturity and a lack of self-respect? I. It has nothing to do with them. You don't respect people for them. You respect them for you. And if mm. I'm going to behave like a dignified professional. It's not because of other people, because that that is a losing game. You know, if I were to decide how I'm going to be, depending on the people around me, losing game. And so you just have to decide. Is that Morgan who said that you said? Yeah. Morgan, I suggest this. Get a person in in my Step Out of the Shadows and Speak program. And just about every program that I have, actually. The first exercise that I have people do is creating a personal a personal compass. 
Very different from a mission statement because mission statements are a drag and no one uses them. A personal compass that you can do right now. Like Marty, who are you? Give me one adjective. Like I am, I am a... Uh, St- oh, I am old. Me, yeah, like, excuse me. Give me one adjective I am to describe you at your best. Like I am... Oh, at my best. I am compassionate. Great, I'm compassionate. And Marty, why are you here on the planet? I'm here to blank. Why am I here? I am, God, you really hit me with some hard ones tonight. Why am I here? I am here on this planet to make it a better place before I, for, before you know, when I die. So I am here to change. No. Yeah, that's uh, good. Here You're to, here to transform. Wanna... Transform. Okay. All right. And that's, by the way, like Marty's going through right now, almost everybody, when you ask them, who are you? Why are you here? What do you want? Like those three questions, right. they seem like they're the most basic questions of all. And they are. Nobody can answer them unless you've taken the time to actually think about it. And that's what that means is we're going around reacting to everybody and letting the world decide who we are in the most critical decisions that we make in the most intimate moments in our life. We're not deciding who we are. Other people are. So that's the problem. So Marty, uh, your, uh, what is your, I want statement? Like I want what? Justice. Just that's like, I've never heard anybody say that. And that is totally you. Okay. So. With that in mind, like Marty now has his personal compass and you can always change it. But, you know, most people, college kids spend months trying to create one of those and it doesn't ever get finished and they don't ever use it. Marty now can, when he's in that sliver in time between event and response and he's about to say something and he, if he has the, the presence of mind to recognize, wait a minute, I've been cycling through this same situation over and over and over and over again in my groundhog day of you know, my groundhog nightmare. So he's going to stop. And before he speaks, say, wait a minute. I said, I am. What did you say? I'm compassionate. What did you say? Yes. You did. So you said that. Yes. I'm compassionate. I'm here to transform. And I want justice is what I'm about to say is what I'm thinking of saying. Is that in line with that or not? Because if it's not, now's my opportunity to, to stop in that sliver in time and shift. And when you do that, what takes that moment in time and turns it from a turning, excuse me, t- transforms it from a cycle because we get into these cycles, cycle, 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 cycle. My God, will this ever end? And can finally transform that into a turning point. That's what it, that's what does that is when you in that moment in time, remember who you are. And that creates a miraculous instant where all of a sudden everything changes and you fulfill your destiny because we are here to be who we are. And that's unfortunately what most of us aren't doing. (laughs) So that's the big, I don't know why I started to tell you about that one, but that's the, that's the key is to, Oh, Oh, with your managers. That's right. It was Megan May. Who was it? Morgan, Morgan, Morgan. That's what you want to do. You are you, the way you communicate has nothing to do with anyone else. You communicate the way you communicate because you are, and you are there too, and you want this. Now, you might I have to check on that right one time out of 10. But if you have a tool, such as your personal compass, and you focus on it before you speak, then you might get it right twice out of every 10 times. And the thing that will you will notice most, Morgan, is that there will be a time when you're like with your mom or with your dad or if you have, if you have kids and you're about to lose it with one of them and you will stop and you'll remember who you are and you'll choose to be kind or you'll choose to be loving when you otherwise might have used words filled with lovelessness and you will be so grateful and you'll be like you will you, that, that that's all you'll need is one time to choose to be loving when you otherwise may not have been and you'll think oh my i get it i get it so that's that's just keep that in mind all we, right we, we tend to think you don't deserve that and you don't deserve this. It's all that that's an illusion. It is that all it is is about you. Here's Andrew and Bill. This is a good one. Hi, Andrew what are and some, Bill. Hey, what are some common communication issues you have found in people with autism spectrum disorder? And how can these issues be improved? Oh God. I'm I like I'm 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 a magnet for we've people got about who 10 more minutes to. Yeah. How's that, Mark? Yes. Yes. I just want to let you know we've got about 10 more minutes, everybody. <laughs> We do not. We have like Ted. We have we have twenty. We have negative twenty minutes. Uh, the, well, yes. uh, I am all about the on the spectrum. I just I have I'm a, like I said I'm a magnet. And so what I have found 
the people in my life that have had the most success with is <clears throat> when I give them, and by the way, you'll find in my Step Out of the Shadows and Speak program that's used in many schools uh, that uh, with kids that have uh, that are, have many different uh, learning uh, styles and different challenges and things that they that they're using it for. But they find a lot of value in when I tell people, or you could tell people, for example, when their face does this. For example, like when when you see somebody scratching the back of their neck. What that means is they're not understanding what you're saying. What that means is at that moment, when you see somebody scratching their neck, you're supposed to stop, back up, and rephrase what you said because they weren't understanding it. So you say it again, say it slower, give them more detail until you see them change their posture. And that is a signal to you that now they're understanding what you're saying so you can move along. And I just mean, like, that's an example of people who are on the spectrum that that I've made the big, biggest difference with is in those areas where I tell people when you see this happening here's what that means and so therefore because what I found is it's the therefore that they don't get like they they don't even when they're taught well this means I don't understand this means that I'm not really receptive to your message then what like they, they, they my friends and loved and loved ones don't know what to do and so I will say what that means is, so give them that next step. So when you tell them, here's what this means, therefore, here's what it means you should do. That's that's when you see people go, oh God, thank you. Because they don't even know how to ask, what do I do? You know, my, my friends and, and people who are in that situation, they don't even know that that's what's missing. And so you spell it out to them, tell them what's missing, tell them what to do and uh, and give them the exact words. For example, making small talk. Uh, when you teach someone who's maybe on the, on the spectrum and who was not good at mingling, making small talk, you know, that feeling of the, their feeling of being trapped in this box that they can't escape from because they, they can't imagine a world where they would have the, the skills to be able to interact with people the way see, they see other people do it. So it puts them further in this box. When you teach them how to walk up to somebody and say, you extend your hand, you look them straight in the eye, shoulders to shoulders, tilt your head forward and say, hi, I'm Jake. What's your name? And that's what you do. You will see, they, they're all of a sudden these social butterflies going around saying, hi, I'm so-and-so. What's your name? And then they, they are so excited with that little tiny thing because they can't see. Here's what I've noticed. They cannot see the progression of steps. They don't know that. The introduction consists of those, you know, you put your hand forward, you tilt it, you tilt your head, you say, hi, I'm so-and-so, what's your name? You pause, you repeat their name back to them. You say, nice to meet you, so-and-so. They don't get any of that. And so when you spell it all out for them, uh, it's just, it unlocks it. And I would give them one, like, that's it. That's, that's all you learn today. You're going to learn how to introduce yourself. Let's go out and do it. They do it. They get so much confidence. They flip out. They can't believe what a different world it is. And it's just because you give them real simple steps and don't assume they know anything. It's like, it's like you're programming a robot, you know, uh, and you, you have to tell a robot step by step what to do and they'll do it. And people who are on the spectrum, by the way, are always my best students. They always have the best results because they just do what they're told. You know, they're like, I, I they realize I don't get this. So I'll do whatever you tell me to do. Oh, phenomenal. Phenomenal. They get huge, 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 huge results. I know I said too much. Thanks. <laughs> What's that? I know I said too much. <laughs> okay. So, okay. Brain damage has some other things. Doesn't like dad's wife. Gotcha. But I want to get to a couple of questions. So don't Wait, get mad at me. We got to go, Mart. We... Oh, that's it. That's the end of this or what? Yes. And we will come back. We will be back tomorrow and we will review these questions. And whichever ones we did not get to today, we will do those first tomorrow. Okay. Okay. That sounds good. Then we can save these questions, correct? Yes, and I apologize for cutting people off who had questions. I will answer them tomorrow. And if you are not here tomorrow, you can still get the answers by you know clicking on the show. There we go. All right. Hey, enjoy. Uh, thank you, everybody. Remember, there's nothing you have to say that you can't say in a loving way. And, that and also remember to support the channel, become a member on YouTube. Thank you, please. Yeah. Yes, please do that. And then you'll get to join some of our uh, private sessions. And guaranteed, you will get interaction and your questions answered in a timely manner on 
the show. Peace. Bye, everybody. Thank you very much. And be good to each other.